Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. So I'm on for Thrifty Thursday, which is hosted by Cherie over at Turquoise Dreaming. So I'll link her down below. Now I am showing you the second half of my estate sale haul. You would have seen the first half last week. So this is the second lot. This involves mainly paper goods. So you saw most of the sewing and junk stuff last week well it's all junk but yeah it's mainly paper goods this week so um, I hope you enjoy it I certainly enjoyed going through it all with you so take care and have fun there was this squashed box which had in it another little case I have to look up about this one too and it's got this little name address phone book in it does come out I think but I won't take it out it might not come out actually I think it's glued down so a dress book and a pen I thought it had some writing on it somewhere oh, it's just got this code there so I'm not sure if I'll be able to find out information about it but it's packaged well it was packaged quite nicely Pity that the top of the box is missing. Well, it's got this part, but there's some of it missing, so I can't see much information about it. There was this cutout of a pharaoh. Oh, it's this, it's a Nestle's picture stamp. It's a picture, this Nestle's picture stamp album belongs to someone from Rose Park in Australia. And they were seven years. I'd say it's from the 60s around about. Then I was really happy to find this book in the pile too because I had just finished ripping bits out of this exact book for my insect cinch journal. <laughs> so it was quite funny to get that exact book again. And it's a great little book. So it's Insects of Australia... 1972, it has black and white pictures. It is glossy, but it also has your plates. And you can fussy cut the pictures out. Gorgeous little book. So very, very happy to have another copy of that. And then I'm pretty sure that the state that all this came from was an ex-teacher because there's a lot of teaching materials, um, like the rulers and all that sort of stuff that I showed. So there was this boomerang books girdle round the world. Now I'm just showing you sort of the better stuff. There were some books in that that were quite boring, so. This one's 1952. So there's some poetry. I quite like the illustrations in this and the pages are nice and clean, good condition for the um, age of it. But I do like the illustrations. These pages will be great for making pockets in that as well. This first studies in plant life in Australasia. It's not in the best condition. It's got a date in there of 37. I think that's the only date in here by the looks. It's got some diagrams in there. And that smells very old. This is the Headway Histories Junior Series, book two famous men and famous deeds. Nice picture, 1943. 
can see I'll just go through these and collect the um, illustrations that I like and if there's any poetry in that. Senior Word Book, 1970. Thought these pages look like that'd be a bit of fun. Educational woodwork, 1952. Nice vintage looking pages, diagrams. Information about the different trees that you'd find for your woodworking. Children's Hour, 1958. It's just a little pamphlet. The International Series of Monographs on Electronics and Instrumentation, 1964. So just diagrams and that. Don't know how much of this I'll keep because I have a fair few books like this. Might keep a few pages with diagrams and that for backgrounds. And then there were a whole stack of these and they're all just your plain sort of exercise books. But they're of course vintage. These would be from the 50s as well because everything else is. I love the one that's got the page on like that though. It looks nice and vintage. I'll have to look up this place. And the pages are nicely aged. They're a nice cream colour. So they'll be great to add to some vintage style journals. So just a stack of paper for me to use in journals, really. Oh, there's some plain ones. So I think, yeah, all plain, all lined. Exercise books. There was a pile of these pads from, I assume, the education department. The following articles are required by whoever, now in grade whatever. So there's a few of those ones. There's three of those ones and then this Education Department, South Australia. It's the same form. It's just got a different title on it. Okay, so I put them there. Festival of Music 1957. I remember being in the Festival of Music. I assume that most of us Aussies took part in a Festival of Music or were forced to take part in a Festival of Music. So I, it wasn't long ago I found my, I probably still have it somewhere in the music book for when I was in it. God Save the Queen. Hark, hark, the lark. I don't think I know most of these. Humpty Dumpty, I think I know that one. So I've got some music there. Uh, Turner's Four Figure Mathematical Tables. It's a whole lot of tables, good for collaging. That would be the 50s, no doubt. <laughs> I wonder if that's the teacher <laughs> smoking. That's funny. Yeah, uh, fourth edition, reprinted 73. Uh, Juno Mix School Scholars Report Book for Deborah Farina. In 19, for four years, 71 to 75. Perspective Projection for Technical Art in High Schools. 1953. Looks a bit too technical for me. But great um, diagrams, though, aren't they? Writing for grades 5, 6 and 7, 1962. A couple of writing sheets, 
best, best writing surface student. So these look from the 50s or whatever also. So we have to slip them in some journals. And some bigger ones here. A ruled memo book. South Australian illustrated table book. Price three pence. Threepence. 1931. That's old. And there's this Barbie Bazaar. Not sure how old it is, is so I hung on to it. it. Looks quite retro. There's some packaging. I assume this might have been for some of the hosiery darning thread because it's Silco Machine Twist Fast Colour, 100 yards. But I love that packaging, it's really cool. So I'll reuse that. Make a nice tuck spot or journal card. Saconic Exposure Meter. Instructions for using the Saconic Leader Model LV1. Whatever that is, I like the picture on the front though. Ooh. It reads stuff. Something about photography. Anyway, I didn't end up with that, so. But it's a cool little instruction booklet with some retro pictures. This is the Pocket Pictorial Gospel of John. It says, please carry this in your pocket and read it every day. I don't know if it has a date. <laughs> I wouldn't want to read this every day. First page, I am a sinner <laughs> beyond self-help. <laughs> I don't think that would make me feel too good. <laughs> and look, there's chocolate wrappers in there. I wonder how old they are. Vintage chocolate wrappers. Yeah. <laughs> they are a sinner. <laughs> um, England's Greater Churches. Now, this has really cool pictures of outside and inside the churches, and I just love the darkness of them. They look gothic. Beautiful. So the next pile, I've got a whole lot of books. Um, these are, I can't remember. Oh, so different sort of ledger style books. Now these are great because these are in your landscape format so you can just fold the pages like that and that'd be perfect. So cash columns. Beautiful. Might actually use one of these. So it looks like I've got a few of the same of those. Check that they're the same. Would be nice if these were all like filled in with beautiful writing as well, but no, no such luck. That one's good with the payments and a bit different. Just check that the first few pages haven't been used. Nice paper though to be able to use. Got some school journals. So a couple of those, which again look to be pretty well similar. Long pages. You can feel the um, print through them. Uh, 
Red Circle account book, 13 column cash. So this is the only one that I found, I think, that has any writing in it. And it's from 68, this one. It's not really as old as what you'd want from some vintage ledger that you want to copy or whatever. It's still nice paper. School fund book. I don't know. Just a cash book again. This one, which is an accounts book, then upside down. And a minute book. Pictorial Quarterlies. This one's a London street scene in the days of Charles II and history of Old Testament times in 24 pictures. It's from 1942. Oh, I haven't looked at this one. Oh, that's great. This one's got little pictures. You won't be able to see the whole lot very well because it's very big. But that's great. Little pictures that I can cut out. I must have just opened maybe this one up. Did I? Because I thought they were all big pictures. Yeah, I would open that one up. Still really cool. It looks like the mice have gotten into it. Down the bottom and top. Well, just when it was folded over. Might be able to cut that and make some pages out of it. And then there's another one which is the opening of Parliament and raw materials for Britain. Now, again, I did just open these and see the big picture. Oh. <laughs> I'm breaking some more. Not in the best condition. This one's a bit stuck. Oh, that's a crease. Oh, this one's quite mouse. Eaten, I think so that one will probably just go in the bin which I might do right now yeah it's pretty dirty isn't it so one can go what's the back of that one like not too bad uh, the seat of a Norman castle and inside a cargo boat it's huge alright I've got the biggest books that I ever got to I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to show you any of them oh the picture's so cool it's a Norman castle but I mean what are you gonna do with that again there are some aspects of it like the castle up here that I might be able to make a page out of it's not in good enough condition really to keep as a whole for any reason and there's this, whatever this is. <laughs> Which has pictures of stuff. I might be able to cut out the little pictures of aeroplanes and that down the side. I don't know how much it's all of that, sorry. They're a bit hard to show. Um, there's this, which is a bolt of type paper, Acme White. One ream, a ream of type paper. So nicely vintaged paper. Then this is Columbia Ribbon and Carbon Co. Ready Masters. So I think it's the paper with the carbon and it's so old that I think the paper's been stained by the carbon. So no need for any dyeing. What I should do is um, peel the paper off and stick the carbon in between some more paper, maybe. I'm not sure. I'd probably stain anything that you put that with. Might put some paper in between there and see what happens. 
Love the colour on this piece, eh? That's gorgeous. So I'll try and do something with that rather than waste it. It smells. This is carbon paper by the looks. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. Just got some cool glassine paper in between, so I might be able to reuse that. Make some pockets. And I'll have to see about using the carbon paper to colour up some stuff, maybe. I have no idea what this is. Feels like a poster, and it is. Oh, there's some animals. Might be able to fussy cut them out. And then there's a whole lot of... It looks like... Um, copied papers. Be able to tear some of them up and use them in collaging. Class record of free books issued. That's a cool sheet. And these would be quite old too. Oh yeah, 1970. They're quite nice and thick those ones. Envelope. Just got a few of them. Just some photocopied sheets. Not sure what I'll do with them, but if I don't want to use that side, I can always use the other side as a page or collage over the top or whatever. News bulletin. So that's a lot of similar stuff there. We're getting there. Getting in the nitty gritty of things. So there was this case, it's a leather case, Hunter. I really love this, so I think I'll keep it. Yeah, don't ask me why, but it's got lots of pockets. It's got this pocket in the back. It's got a key. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was in there. Oh, look, and it's got little pockets in there. Pockets in there, in there. It's big enough to fit documents and that in too. But I just really like it. It's pretty old and ratty, but I really do like that. So and we'll hang on to that for some storage. Um, and then, yeah, the, the two biggest books I've ever seen, which you won't see much of, is this National Geographic Atlas of the World. It's got another poster thing in it. have a date 75 for this one just a huge atlas <laughs> so make some good envelopes out of that one and then the other one is even bigger than that would you believe and that is this collection of bridal bouquets I mean seriously you wouldn't even have a coffee table big enough to fit this on. Whoop, just knocking my light over. So yeah, don't know what I'll do with these envelopes, I would say. I don't know what else you could do with them. This one is, does it say? 75. But it's just photos of big bridal bouquets ridiculous sized book whoops knock my light over again and then while we're looking at big stuff there was I can't remember what was in here the folders envelopes oh envelopes Education department envelopes, and these are huge too. I'll get one that way so you can see. So huge, huge envelopes. So that'd make like 
an A4 or just taller than an A4 size journal. So there's a stack of those. Okay, so there was this, The Wonderful World of Walt Disney. It has the four books in there, Worlds of Nature, Stories from Other Lands, Fantasy Land and America. So I'm just going to take two out. So this one has gorgeous pictures. 1965. So just lots of nature pictures, which I love. And I wanted to see what was in this one. Yeah, on fantasy pictures and cartoons. Beautiful. And then a Webster's Universal Dictionary. Oh my goodness, look at that brick. So I'll probably unscrew this, I think. That makes it a lot easier to turn the pages. <laughs> so. But these are cool because they're illustrated. So I'll go through and harvest the bits that I like. Beautiful illustrations. So the owner of all this stuff must have liked keeping some scrapbooks unfortunately they weren't the type of scrapbooks that i like and they must have been a royal watcher so this one focuses on is it princess anne oh no i've got alexandra i don't know i don't follow the royals so i don't know who's who the duke Alex. It's got a lot of photos of Alex in this one. But I mean, someone might like this sort of stuff. They're a bit crinkled from the glue. Yeah, a lot of photos of someone called Alexandra. Princess Alexandra. nice those flowers or use them so this one's from 63 63 that one and then this one is That's beautiful, isn't it? Roses. The Queen and Margaret. So I think this one focuses on Princess Margaret. Yeah. to use since it's nice and cleanly fallen out for me. But yeah, I'm not really a royal watcher or I don't think I'll make any royal journals. I have collected a bit of stuff just because it was in the bins and that and I didn't want to see it go to waste but I'll probably make up some packs in the future for my shop if I ever get energy to do that. I'm 
sure someone would appreciate these because they've obviously put a lot of effort into grabbing bits and pieces to put in here and they're beautiful pictures. So on. This is Welcome to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh from the Schools of South Australia, 1954. A certificate in the presence of Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke. Royal Music Festival. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Minister of Education. The Duke. Charles and Anne. So that's quite, quite a nice bit of ephemera. Archway wedding stationery. I got excited when I thought that saw that and thought it would be stationery for a wedding, but it's oh, it must be like a advertising booklet, which is still pretty cool. It's got about the toasts and cutting the cake, and this must be some of the stationery that they can make the place cards. So I'll be able to use this in wedding journals if I ever make any. I've got a fair bit of stuff here for wedding journals. Fun with sewing. Shapes and stitches, ribbon tidy. It's about my level of sewing. Examination register. This is nice and old. Storecraft number 171, December the 24th, 1955. National Grocer's Guide. going in the bin. Cello tape on new product in line. So that's cool, some nice vintage newspaper. Let's put them down there. And then this big scrapbook. I got excited when I saw this, like, oh, what's in there? But it's all this scribbling block. It must have been an article in a newspaper or something. Looks like someone was trying to sell it for $10. Maybe people like the scribbling block. I don't think I do though. Yeah, so it's just heaps of um, scribbling block articles. I would say from the 60s. It's just full of them. Hysteria and roses, tit for tat. Are you a culprit? Royal homage. Insect farms. I pray for sunshine, growing pains. Yeah, women's world. So, 
very interesting. Not. <laughs> so. Now, I've got a bit of fun stuff here. Well, what I consider fun stuff. There's this little day tripper booklet. I don't know if these are still used. It says $5, so it couldn't be too old. Day tripper, welcome aboard. So yeah, because I would use them, but I don't know if I'm allowed to or not. Like I'm in my journals. <laughs> so if anyone knows, let me know. Yeah. Um, this, I think this is really cool. John Sands, um, Bugs Bunny, it's Warner Brothers collector cards. Well, I'll card. It's not really a game though, because it doesn't have anything on the other side. So I'd suggest they're just sort of collector cards. And there's Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Looney Tunes, Sylvester, Petunia Pig, Tweety Bird, Yuzumite Sam, Elmer Fudd, all of our favourites, Porky Pig. So they're very, very cool. These, I'm always trying to get some of these. I think I've got some put away, some more vintage ones. Commonwealth Bank money sort of envelopes. Two dollars of five cent coins. I don't know what has been written on there. That one's in pencil, I think, so I can rub that out. But the other ones are in pen, unfortunately. But yeah, some little pockets. Got this beautiful, beautiful book. Love it, the Ugly Duckling. It's gifted in 1951. Just love the colour pictures. Nice old book. Got that in my collection. And I'm so happy to find this one, a little golden book. And I'm pretty sure it's an original because it's got the brown spine there. And it's got the numbers on there. And this one is number, a little pond in the woods. Uh, number 43 on the list. So yeah, really happy. So that's definitely one for my collection. I won't be making a journal with this. It's got water damage, unfortunately, but otherwise it's still in pretty good nick. The pages are anyway. It's got the black and whites and then a few colors. So just gorgeous, love it. Uh, there were more little golden books there, but I didn't get them because they were priced. The price was a bit more than I would want to pay. Uh, there was this Australian Women's Weekly Decorative Dressmaking, uh, 1967. So this will be great fun to cut up and use in sewing journals. Nice and vintage. There was this photo. I think it must have come out of a frame. These two boys. Um some of the stuff come in these suitcases and this tag was on one of the suitcases so I took that off. I'll use that in a journal, a travel journal or something. It's really old. And another Australian home journal. I love these. This one's from 1960 and it has the pattern in it. It's in very good condition. Must start doing some vintage journals. Finish off my son's wolf journal next, hopefully. <laughs> Unless I find something else and put it on hold again. Look at them all, gorgeous.
There's the pattern. Must be for a skirt. Definitely one of my favourite magazines, those. Let's put them to the side. There was a, um, this was full of bits and pieces. It's one of your, is it your Janome? Or the Singer sewing machine table drawers. Even these alone usually sell for a bit. So I'm going to, I should probably try and, um, Varnish this as well, but I'm gonna keep this for some storage. Beautiful for storing your tags and stuff in. So yeah, I thought that was a great score. There was this which I'll also keep for some storage. It's a Coda slide file box for your slides. I should probably fill it up with slides. I need all the slide storage I can get, but what I might do is fill it, um, fill it up with altered slides. If I alter some slides and I want somewhere to store them, I can store them in here, but it's got the index sheet and, and all these little bits you can take out. Isn't it cool? So I thought, yeah, that's quite retro. Retro storage container to keep in the craft room. Store my little altered slides in. And then there's this scrapbook. Now this one I was a little more excited about because the, whoever did this one must have been studying costumes. So this one is a costume scrapbook and the writing in it is amazing too, look at it. And they've stuck in materials. So it's material for quilting and then um, information about quilting and then pictures. The only pity about this is goodness knows whether these pictures are copyright or not. Probably still would be. Well, one would think they're probably from, you know, 40s, 50s or whatever, so. But even still, they're just gorgeous. And they've done a lot of work. be quite interesting and actually I will read it because I'd learn a lot about the different types of fabrics and that through this. Look at their writing. Which mine was that neat? The history of costume and some typing. Gorgeous pictures. Headdresses. But I mean, even though I don't think I'd be able to copy them, or I wouldn't because I don't know if I, you know, the ages of them and that, I can always like cut them out and reproduce a journal with some of the information and the pieces. And even the fabrics and keep the work that she's done alive in some way. So I think that is gorgeous, that. So I'll uh, we'll go off and get the last lot. Yes, there is an end to it, I promise. So I got excited when I saw this. It's a Viewmaster, but it's a talking Viewmaster. So I thought, what the heck? And then I was hoping there'd be some of the view sort of reels in there. And there is, there's this. It doesn't have many in it though. But because it's a talking view master, it has this thing on there. <laughs> so 
yeah so what I think I'll do is I think it takes batteries so um, I might stick some batteries in and see if it works and have a look at these and listen to it um, and then I'll have a look up and research it and then I'll debate whether I'm going to take these apart to use them. I know that the original, like the normal ones that aren't talking ones, they actually sell for quite a bit these days. So I don't know if I'd actually use them in my journals. I'd probably just resell them. So I will look up about this, but I thought that's fascinating. Yeah, because I've gone to buy some of these before and yeah, they've priced it out. I haven't wanted to pay what they've cost in the end, so. And the last thing I've got is some um, laces and that doilies and stuff. So there is this sort of chiffon. So yeah, it's tablecloth with some embroidery, a nice lemon coloured one. So with a lot of this stuff, I think I said at the start, um, there were sort of like boxes and that, and you couldn't really see what was in them much. You'd see a bit. Um, but not like everything that was in there. So I didn't actually know most of what I was getting. <laughs> so, but that was all right. You know, I'm quite happy with what I got for what I paid and everything. So that's this one. That's beautiful. This handkerchief. It's got a beautiful design there in the corner. That's lovely too. It's nice and firm and starchy. So I make beautiful pockets. Now this must be a set. So it's a big tablecloth. I could actually use this to go quite nicely in my kitchen. Although I get upset when I use this sort of thing because I spill stuff on it very quickly. When I wash it, the stain doesn't come out and then I feel like I've ruined it. So I almost rather you cut them up and use them. Beautiful though, isn't it? This is quite big, that one. And I think it has these matching pieces. Yeah. There's three of those. One of these doilies. Verona made in Belgium, dry clean only. Another one of these big ones. This one's gorgeous too, very sheer. Needs a bit of a clean, but it's got this Chinese, Japanese dragon on it. Very, very nice. Be tempted to sew around that and make it as a page in a um, oriental style journal. And then I've got some bolts of laces and stuff. So there's this broidery. It's very pretty. So a stack of that. which this has caused a dilemma, a bit like the dilemma I've got now with my cottons because I have my lace drawers that you probably saw in my organisation or my room tour. And I managed to make enough room in my lace drawers to put all my bolts because I had a tub with bolts in, in the other room and I wanted to empty that out and have a spare tub. So I did that. And now I've got so many these bolts and they're not going to fit in the drawers. So now I'm going to have to put them in a tub in the spare room. So this is lovely. So a stack of that stuff as well. This is my favourite. It's like an olive green, a real murky colour. Just love it. Very different. one. 
that's really pretty as well, nice and wide for the spines. And then this is the last one. And it's got this satin ribbon in it, ruffled satin ribbon. So that's pretty as well for a spine. More belly bands, pockets. So that was heaps of fun. A bit of a lucky dip again. Um, yeah, got lots of papers and that, and lots of weird stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, take care of yourself. I've got a lot of work to do to go and put all of this away now. So be good and I will see you again soon. Bye.